We're in the middle of a national identity crisis in this country. Okay, the things that used to give us a sense of purpose and meaning and identity, things like faith, patriotism, hard work, these things have disappeared. They're gone in most of American life. That leaves a moral vacuum in its wake. Vivek Ramaswamy campaigning in South Carolina last month. You know, the Harvard and Yale educated entrepreneur, author and activist from Ohio. He's jumped into a field of White House hopefuls, exploiting what political this week calls a quiet moment in the GOP race to make his move. He heads to New Hampshire this coming week for a bus tour of more than a dozen cities and towns across the first primary state. And Vivek Ramaswamy joins us now from Columbus, Ohio, which also, of course, is an important state of the race. Uh, so, Vivek, welcome uh, to Fox News this uh, Saturday afternoon in between your campaigning. Thank you, Eric. Good to see you. Good, too. Uh, when you hit the campaign trail next week up in New Hampshire in the Granite State, what will you tell those voters that can also apply to those across the country? So, look, I'm an America first conservative, but to put America first, we need to rediscover what America is the values that set this nation into motion over 250 years ago in places not that far from the places we're visiting in New Hampshire. And I just believe deep in my bones that most Americans across this country still share those values in common, from free speech to meritocracy to the pursuit of excellence to self-governance over aristocracy. Most Americans believe these things to be true. But if we can rally around and unite around those common ideals, then we can take the America first agenda even further than Donald Trump was ever able to take it. I'm the outsider in this race, and I intend to deliver on that. What do you think we've lost? What have we lost in this country in values and ethics uh, and where we're going? What troubles you the most? I think we've lost our sense of national identity. We have celebrated our diversity and our differences so much that we forgot the very ideals that unite us as Americans. And the things that, you know, I'm a millennial, right? I'm the first millennial candidate to ever run for president as a Republican. And I can tell you on behalf of my generation, really every generation in this country, we're so hungry for a cause and for purpose, yet the things that used to fill that hunger from a belief in God to a belief in your nation to even a belief in family and hard work as things that matter, those things have disappeared. And that's what allows wokeness and the gender ideology cult and the climate change cult to fill and prey on that vacuum. But I think that we can fill that void with something more meaningful that actually allows us to reunite as one people. And that's why I'm able to take on a lot of issues that other presidential candidates are not taking on, from affirmative action to the climate religion. I'm going head on after those issues, but I also think we can unite the country by doing it. That is why I'm in this race. You also talk about America first, of course, uh, that is uh, former President Trump's platform. Do you see a, a possibility or a candidacy in carrying out the policies versus the personality? that has alienated so many Americans and caused the uh, presidential race loss as well as the midterm loss and has raised a lot of questions uh, about his political future. So, look, I think there's an opportunity to do what Ronald Reagan did in 1980 and again in 1984 to win in a landslide election, not by compromising on our principles, including the America First principles, but by doubling down on them, by being uncompromising, but towards a positive vision of the future. And I think that Donald Trump did this country a great service by exposing a lot of the problems and the administrative rot of the corrupt federal government. But we're only going to go so far with vengeance and with grievance. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take that agenda further than Trump ever did by doing it based on a moral foundation, based on first principles like Reagan did. That'll allow actually not only just to pursue the same agenda, but to go even further with it to solve problems in this country, ranging from using the military to secure our border, not just building a wall, all the way to actually shutting down some of those very government agencies from the Department of Education to the FBI that have created the very problems. And so that's what I'm in this race to do. But I think a positive vision is actually the key to even getting it done and going further than Trump did. You just talked about putting the military on the border. Uh, the, the southern border crisis has been overwhelming. What do you propose to do? What do you think the administration should do that it is not doing right now? Well, I think even the discussion of building a wall is not enough. I think you have to build the wall and actually use the military to secure it. 
I believe in using the military to secure our border ahead of using it to secure somebody else's border halfway around the world. That means using technology, drones. It actually means placing U.S. troops on the border. That shouldn't be a controversial idea, especially when there's a hundred thousand plus Americans dying each year, Eric, due to the fentanyl crisis here in the United States as a product of drug cartels pushing Chinese manufactured fentanyl across the border in what they view as an opium war. This is just common sense. Our military is supposed to to protect American lives on American soil, and I will finally be the president who actually delivers on that. Those are the kinds of issues that compel me to be in this race. And I think a lot of professional politicians, career politicians, they're afraid of taking on the defense establishment, which recoils at this idea. A career politician won't get that job done. It's going to take an outsider. And that's my role here in this race. And when you say another border, I presume you're talking about Ukraine. I mean, look, Vladimir Putin is a war criminal. His name is going down like Hitler. And Pol Pot, he has invaded a sovereign democracy. Our troops are not there. Uh, and he uh, poses a threat to NATO and to all our Western European allies. That's totalitarianism. That's dictatorship. How can we push back against that war criminal to try and prevent what he's doing, as well as face the rising uh, power of China? That's that's uh, on the other side. So that's a complicated issue because I think that we need to prioritize declaring independence from China. And the last thing we want is to drive Russia into China's hands. So my top foreign policy priority is absolutely reducing the dependence of the U.S. on our top enemy, and that is communist China. When it comes to Ukraine, I have no problem with Ukraine pursuing a Ukraine first agenda and Poland pursuing a Poland first agenda, just like the U.S. is pursuing an America first agenda. But I do think foreign policy is all about prioritization. We need to keep our eye on the threat posed by China. And meanwhile, let Europe step up to actually stop the threats that actually are presented to Europe. I actually think that Germany is going in the wrong direction, stopping Poland from being able to defend itself through export controls, sending fighter jets to Ukraine. That's Europe's business. Europe should be able to handle it. I think the role of the United States, though, is to lead through diplomacy. And that's what Biden has failed on. You see other autocrats now stepping into his void. I think the U.S. can lead in other parts of the world, not with our troops or military equipment, but with our diplomacy, with leadership that has an actual spine. That's what's missing in the current White House. That's a big part of what I'm going to bring to the table. Vivek uh, Ramaswamy, who's running for the Republican nomination, off to New Hampshire this uh, this coming week, uh, a bus tour. Yes, that's right. We're when New Hampshire is the state that actually propelled John, Donald Trump in 2015. Mm-hmm. We're making big bets in that state. We've actually recruited several of the people that joined Trump's team early on in 2015. And we're excited to co- go to the Granite State and hopefully spread the message. Yeah, so Mr. Tr- to it. Uh, Mr. Trump's state campaign chairman in 2016, 2020 has joined you. So it should be uh, you'll be making it quite an interesting race. Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you for joining us from Ohio uh, this afternoon. Thank you. All right, though. Thank you.